All right, we are here in beautiful sunny Florida, and today, people, we are breaking down UFC Fight Night 100, Bader vs. Nogueira 2 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, I just recorded my uh, Fight Night 99 uh, breakdown. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Um, great card there, 14 fight card. But, uh, man, uh, this card, it's probably not as good as the other card, the uh, morning card, Musasi vs. Hall, but I do have more bets on this card. Um, it's funny, I actually have 18 total bets for uh, these two cards combined. Uh, a lot of stuff I like here, a lot of dogs in particular too, but uh, just the usual stuff. Follow me on Twitter at uh, MMA Kelton, you know, subscribe. Uh, while I was on vacation, I hit uh, 400 Twitter followers, 50 subscribers, so thank you so much. But uh, let's break down these fights, man. Uh, first up, we got Darren Stort plus 120, taking on Francimar Bajoso, minus 160. So um, it's really hard to tell how uh, good Darren Stort actually is. He, he's pretty much only fought cans. Um, the guys he fought are just really are not good at all. Um, you know, he's got uh, good hands and good cardio, but he is a very small 205 pounder. He usually weighs in at 200 pounds, 202. Um, we, France Marbojoso, the last time he fought a guy who should be a 185 pounder, Elvis Topshich, Bojoso pretty much just used his size against him and pretty much dominated. And I think that might happen to Darren Stort here. Um, I think, uh, man, Darren Story, he could have some success on the uh, feet, but Brojoso, he surprised people in the past. He is a black belt in kickboxing, and uh, more importantly, he is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. So I do like Francimar Brojoso to utilize his wrestling and his ground game to possibly pick up a submission, but I'm going to go with Brojoso via a 30-27 decision. And when it comes to betting, I would stay away from this fight. Um... Uh, France Morbohoso is just a guy I don't like to bet on, but he is the pick. But uh, moving on, possibly my favorite fight of the weekend. Justin Scoggins, minus 185, taking on Pedro Munoz, plus 145. So I'm super high on both guys, and I have been for a very long time, and I think this has the making be a classic, man. Uh, worth noting, it is Justin Scoggins' 135-pound debut, so don't know how that's going to go. Also, it is in Brazil, for whatever that's worth. Um, Pedro Munoz, his only losses are to Rafael Assuncao and Jamie Rivera by close decisions, and that is nothing to be ashamed of there. Um, Pedro Munoz says striking has come a very long way. He turned himself into a very sharp striker, but obviously Justin Scoggins is still going to have the advantage there, but... Munoz can absolutely hang in the striking department, and uh, I'm not 100% sure Justin Scoggins can hang with Pedro Munoz on the ground if it gets there. And uh, you know what? I do think it gets there. I think uh, the first round, Justin Scoggins, he is going to outstrike uh, Pedro Munoz and pick up that round, but Pedro Munoz being the very smart fighter that he is, I think he's going to figure Justin Scoggins out, get him to the ground, and I am going to go with Pedro Munoz via a second round submission for the upset. And I do have one unit on Pedro Munoz at plus 150. So, um, just an amazing fight there. I can't, really can't wait for that fight. I wish that was the main event of that, this card. If that was, if this fight was five rounds, man, th that is a classic. But even though I do have this fight ending in, t in the uh, second round. But uh, moving on, a couple of heavyweights here. Luis Henrique, minus 270, taking on Christian Colombo, plus 190. Um... Christian Colombo, possibly one of the uh, sloppiest, slowest fighters in the division. Um, he, the only thing he really has going for him is that he's not particularly terrible at anything. Uh, he's decently well-rounded, but Luis Henrique, he does have some great skills, and at 23 years old, he has a massive speed and athleticism, athleticism advantage. And You know, Colombo has a good chin, and Luis doesn't really KO guys on the feet all that often, so I am going to go with Luis Henrique via a first-round submission here. I think he's going to uh, crack Colombo with a good shot, not knock him out, but... Uh, you know, hurt him enough to uh, get him to the ground and Luis Henrique to uh, wrap up a limb or choke him out. So Henrique via first round submission. And I do have a parlay of Luis Henrique and I will tell you who I have him paired with when I get there. So moving on, we do have Johnny Eduardo minus 180 taking on Manny Gamburian plus 140. So 
two aging Bantamweights here basically fighting for their career, honestly. I think whoever loses this fight, it could po it could possibly be over for him, man. Uh, Johnny Eduardo, he seems to have a little bit more left in the tank, but uh, he's a little inactive for my liking. Uh, Manny's wrestling, it could be enough for him to win at least two out of the three rounds, but I do think that's unlikely. I think Johnny Eduardo, he's got a pretty good speed advantage. Uh, I think uh, he's going to be able to avoid the takedowns and pick apart Manny on the feet, and I do think he is going to knock Manny out early. I do have Johnny Eduardo via a first round KO. Um, I do got to say, though, I would like to see their submission games collide. Um, hopefully, uh, one guy takes it to the ground. Um, I'd like to see uh, how the grappling plays out there. Uh, I think Johnny Eduardo, um, he could have the advantage there, too, but when it comes to actually getting the fight to the ground, I think uh, Manny is the more is the one more likely to do that so i'd like to see manny um on top of eduardo and i want to see what eduardo can do with that but i don't think it gets there even i think eduardo just knocks him out in the first round early so eduardo first round ko is the pick but i don't have a, a bet on eduardo i do have a bet on the under at uh under two and a half rounds i was surprised it was set at two and a half rounds um plus 120 at, uh under two and a half rounds that uh giving me some backup in case uh manny gamburian goes out there and submits johnny eduardo early so um i do like that bet there a lot um the under two and a half at plus 120 but moving on a couple of light heavyweights here marcos hogerio de lima minus 170 taking on gadzamirad antigulov plus 130 um i'm pretty impressed with antigulov he's got a uh, big power uh good wrestling he's got good uh good uh shot selection uh i like the way he strikes a lot a very smart striker he trains at the same gym as uh rashid magomedov and his striking reminds me a lot of rashid's uh, obviously he's a 205 pounder so he's a lot slower but he does uh remind his striking reminds me a lot of rashid's he's a very smart striker um you know marcos he uh he's got some of the there's uh same abilities big power good on the ground um thing is uh He's got a good, a really good submission game to add on to that. And, uh, you know, if Antigolov decides to take it to the ground or if Marcos gets it to the ground, I think, uh, I think Marcos does have a jujitsu advantage. But, thing is, I, I don't think, uh, it'll go there. I think Antigolov will want to stand, so he won't take Marcos down. He'll, he'll defend Marcos' takedowns if Marcos actually goes for them. But, I do th expect these guys to swing leather and, uh, for this to be a very, very quick fight. Uh, I think these guys are just going to go out and bang it, bang it out, and whoever drops first, drops first. Um, uh, the thing is, uh, Marcos is a little bit sloppier. I think uh, Antigolov is going to be able to capitalize, and I do have Antigolov via a first round KO. Um, with that being said, I don't have any plays on this fight, even though Antigolov is a plus 130. Um, you know, the under is uh, under 1.5, minus 160. Um, I don't really want to take that just because I feel like maybe uh, one of the guys could ride the other out on the ground for a round or two. So I just want to stay away from this fight. It's it's too crazy of a fight, especially with uh, Antiglov's debut. I don't like to bet on debuting fighters too much unless I'm super confident. And super confident is something I'm definitely not here. But Antiglov first round KO is the pick. So moving on, Caesar Fajaya plus 170 taking on Jack Hermanson minus 230. Um, Cesar Vejea is a good fighter but the problem is he has the worst chin in the UFC um, people have forgotten that lately just because he won his last fight against a power puncher but uh, that power puncher, Bamboje, he is a very small guy who should be at 170, and he also has really no ground game or takedown defense, and Fajaya capitalized. But thing is, Jack Hermanson is a very big 185-pounder with lethal striking and good takedown defense, so I do like Jack to defend the takedowns, and I think things go horribly for Fajaya on the feet. I think uh, Jack Hermanson lands a big strike and knocks him out. So Jack Hermanson, round one K is the pick and I do have Jack Hermanson in that parlay with Luis Henrique fortunately I got Jack Hermanson at minus 170 he's up to 230 now and uh, I also have the under one and a half in this fight and uh, man I'm 
very, very happy with those plays. I think Jack Hermanson is going to go out there and simply put Fahey away early. But uh, moving on, another I, I like this fight. I don't see anybody really talking about it. But uh, Sergio the Panther Marais, minus 185, taking on Zach Otto, plus 145. Um, I think this fight's a lot closer than the odds indicate. I think uh, this fight should be around pick 'em, and uh, you know Zach Otto, he is a just a tank of a man with uh, some good athleticism behind him. Uh, he, he's he's a pretty good striker, and he's very good on the ground too. I like Zach Otto a lot, and I didn't think very highly of him watching his um, regional fights when I was uh, doing tape study for him versus Berkman, but. You know, the fight versus Bergman was a split decision, but I was super impressed with Zach Otto. Um, and I think this is a good matchup for him against Sergio Moraes. Sergio, he is aging, but he's very dangerous, especially on the mat. Um, he knocked out Akhmedov on the feet, but Akhmedov was just completely gassed. And I don't think that's going to be a problem for Otto here. He's, a, he's got good cardio. But um, I do think Otto, he does have a clear striking advantage here with uh, leg kicks being the key... Um, Sergio Moraes, he's pulled out to fights from uh, knee injuries. Uh, he's injured his knee about three or four times now, and Zach Otto is very good at leg kicks. And, uh, man, I think if he puts together the right game plan and uh, kicks the hell out of that leg and uh, beats Moraes up on the feet in defense takedowns, this is a clear win for Zach Otto. I'm not sure if he can get the knockout, but I, I think this is a clear win for Zach Otto. Uh, I do like Zach Otto via a 30-27 decision, and I do have one unit on Zach Otto, and I got him at plus 160. So moving on, we got Kamaru Usman, minus 220, taking on Worley Alves, plus 180. Man, um, this is amazing, this is another just amazing fight that I wish was being discussed more. Um, two, uh, welterweight prospects, in my opinion. Uh, Kamaru Usman, his, um, his wrestling is probably likely the key to this fight, um, but uh, the thing is, Worley Alves has a nasty guillotine. Um, you, you saw Colby Covington go and take down Worley Alves right away, and Alves just snatched him up in the guillotine and choked him out. Um, also, Worley Alves, he's got pretty lethal power, and uh, I think he could give Usman a lot of trouble if it stays on the feet. Um, I, I can just see either guy making the other guy look really, really bad. I can see Usman just completely throwing Alves around on the ground, and I can see Alves uh, wrapping up that early submission or uh, or just piecing up Usman on the feet, but it's super, super tough for me. Um, I th I think uh, this fight is should also be a pick 'em. Um, so I am gonna go with a bet on Worley Alves. Um, when it comes to the pick, I'm still gonna go with Worley Alves. I like Wor Worley Alves, and I'm gonna go with Worley via a second round submission. I think uh, the first round, I think Usman will have some success with his wrestling, but in the second round, I think uh, Worley is going to be able to defend a takedown pick apart Usman on the feet a little bit. Usman goes for a bad takedown, and Worley Alves hits that guillotine that he's well known for. Second round submission, Worley Alves, and uh, at one at plus 185, which is what I got him at, I, that is an easy bet for me. So, uh, official pick, Worley Alves, second round submission. So, moving on, another underdog I like, man. Um, Talus Ladies, minus 155. Uh, taking on Kristoff Jotko plus 135. So, uh, striker versus grappler, veteran versus rising contender. Um, tough fight to call. Um, really, uh, once again, another fight that I think should just be pick em. Um, I can see uh, ladies just out grappling Jocko and backpacking him for three rounds and maybe even picking him a sub, but I can also see Christoph Jocko out striking ladies for three rounds, and a KO wouldn't even surprise me. It's just a tough fight to read, man. Um, I th I th I'm going to go with uh, Christoph Jocko as the underdog here. Um, Talos ladies, he is aging. Um, he's got some miles on him. I think uh, I think Jocko he's gonna hit him with a big shot early, and uh, I don't think Talos is ever gonna really recover. Um, I am gonna go with Kristoff Jocko via a 30-27 decision here. Um, I'm still trying to think how this fight's gonna go. I haven't completely wrapped my head around. Um, this is one of the tougher fights of the weekend to get a good read on. But um, Kristoff Jocko, I think he has a good enough chance here to where uh, plus 135 is a very good bet. So. Um, 
bet on Jocko, pick on Jocko. Um, fun fight, though. I, I can't wait to see how it plays out. But uh, moving on, probably my uh, most confident pick of the weekend, Claudia Gedalia, minus one or minus 450, taking on Courtney Casey, plus 360. So obviously, like I said, I love Claudia here a lot. Um, Courtney, he ha- she has looked great in her last two wins, two finishes, but uh, against Christina Ch- Stanchu, who's pretty much a jobber, and Random Marcos, who's... Uh, Kind of an emotional fighter who makes a lot of mistakes. Random Marcos was winning that fight, and she pretty much just gave it away. But uh, Claudia, she has dominated everybody she has fought except uh, Ioana. And even against Ioana, I thought Claudia won the first fight, and the second obviously was very close. But, um, you know, not only do I think Claudia is just levels above Casey, but I think she's a bad stylistical matchup for Casey. Um, I think she's going to be able to take down Courtney Casey quite easily, just like Random Marcos did, but Claudia Gadelia has just levels above Random Marcos. I think this is just a showcase fight for Claudia Gadelia here in Brazil. And I do have Claudia via a third round submission just to uh, wear Courtney Casey out and uh, just beat her up and eventually finish her late. And uh, I will talk about my Claudia Gadelia bets at the end, so stay tuned for that. But uh, moving on to the co-main event here. Very fun fight. I'm super pumped about this fight. Thomas Almeida, minus 320, plus Albert Morales, plus 260. Awesome fight. Big fan of both these guys. Um... I'm expecting this fight to just be an absolute fire fight until somebody drops. And, you know, um, Morales, he's no joke. He probably shouldn't be such a big underdog, but Almeida striking is just so sharp and smart. Um, if Almeida never would have fought Cody Garbrandt, he'd be coming in uh, fighting Albert Morales um, still as like a 20-0 and fighter. I think Thomas Almeida would probably be like a minus 600 here. Um, I wish that was the case. I'd happily take a bet on Albert Morales. But, uh, man, uh, Almeida, his chin is a little questionable. He got rocked by Brad Pickett, and then obviously he got knocked out by uh, Cody Garbrandt. And uh, Morales has big power, but the thing is, I just think Almeida's a lot sharper than... uh, Albert Morales, and, you know, that's no uh, knock against Albert Morales, he's just very young in this game, and I do think he could eventually develop the skills, but I think Almeida's just too uh, far ahead of him at this point, um, my pick is Thomas Almeida via a first-round KO, I think he's just going to be able to utilize his, uh, sharp boxing and, uh, put Morales away, I think, uh, Morales is going to come in aggressive, and Almeida's going to show him really quick that he should not have done that, but, uh, Thomas Almeida KO first round is the pick. Um, I, I'm staying away from it when it comes to betting. I do have the under, but I wouldn't bet on either guy. I don't think it's enough for a shot on Morales, or uh, I don't think minus 320. I think that's too much to put uh, Almeida in a parlay. But like I said, I do have the under at uh, even money. But moving on to the main event here. This fight really doesn't do too much for me. Um, it's it's a solid fight. I, I don't know why it's the main event. Like I said, Scoggins Mino should be the main event. But Ryan Bader minus 350 taken on Little Nog plus 290. Both guys coming off big KO wins. But uh, this fight really it makes no sense. Uh, Ryan Bader should have got a higher ranked fight. But... Uh, I do love Ryan Bader here. Um, Ryan Bader, he, he's he's a guy who's actually still in his uh, prime and has only lost to the elite, um, aside from that loss to Tito Ortiz uh, back in the day. But uh, Noguera, he's well past his prime. Obviously, he still has incredible boxing, and he can KO people who aren't really good on the feet like Pat Cummings. Um thing is, Bader, like I said, he has screwed up against uh, old veterans who know what they're doing before, like the Tito Ortiz fight, but, uh, so I'm not, I'm not ruling out Little Nog to KO Bader, but, uh, I think Bader is just the much better fighter at this point. I like Bader to utilize the takedowns and slowly chip away at Noguera on the ground until they, uh, second around, uh, second or third round TKO or submission, but my official pick is Ryan Bader ver- via a third round TKO, and I do have Ryan Bader in a parlay. So I am going to go over my bets for this card. Like I said, I do have uh, 18 total plays over the weekend. If you want to see my plays for the other card, go check that video out, or uh, follow me on Twitter. I am going to post all 18 bets on there. But uh, for this card, I do have a half unit on Worley Alves at plus 180. 
I do have uh, one unit on Christoph Jocko plus 135, one unit on Pedro Munoz plus 150, one unit on Zach Otto plus 160, one unit on uh, Almeida Morales under at even money. I do have one unit on Hermanson Fajaya under at plus 120. I have one unit on Eduardo Gambirian under 2.5 at plus 120. I have a half unit on Claudia Gadelia winning in round three at plus 1,000 to win five units. Um, like I said, I think Claudia is going to win in the third round, and at plus 1,000, I figured I'd take the shot on that. Why not? Um, a parlay I have that uh, includes fighters from both cards. I have uh, one unit on Musasi in the distance with Claudia Gadelia at plus 110. I have uh, 1.7 units on Gedalia and Bader at minus 170. Um, and finally, I have 1.5 units on Hermanson and Louise Henrique to win 1.8 units. So, that is going to do it for me, guys. If you have not checked out the other uh, breakdown, the UFC Fight 999 Musasi vs. Hall breakdown, go check that video out. Um, check out my Twitter, MMA Kelton. Keep up with uh, what I'm talking about, all my bets, all my plays. Could have a couple more, who knows. But, uh, yeah, man, thank you for subscribing once again. It's nice to hit 50 subscribers, really the first uh, mark worth noting when it comes to YouTube subscribers. Um, 400 Twitter followers. It's awesome. It's really awesome, especially since I started out with absolutely nothing. But, uh, yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, enjoy the fights, and I am out of here.